Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good and I hope you're keeping safe. It's your girl Alina and this is Simply My Views. I am so happy to have you here. And today we'll be talking about yet another topic that is very close to my heart. Yo, <laughs> I am really hoping that my nerves don't get the best of me because I get quite emotional when I talk about mental health in general and specifically my story because I have my personal experience with mental health. So you probably have heard someone say they are depressed, they are, they are anxious or they are having a panic attack. All these things, ne, they are part of your mental well-being. Ne? You probably also called yourself like, oh guys, I'm depressed or Sometimes it's in a joking manner. Sometimes it can be very, very serious. But, you know, I think we don't really understand the magnitude of those words or those feelings to begin with. Because unlike other physical well-beings where you feel a tummy ache or a headache, mental health can come in so many forms, in so many ways. And sometimes you don't even know it is an illness you just sometimes you feel like maybe you're being too dramatic or people are telling you you're being too dramatic you're being too emotional you know so <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would know because i really i have been there i have been there uh, like i said i had my own story uh, about two years ago i actually now got a professional diagnosis what that means is i got sick then i went to the hospital and doctors said I had a mental illness and it needed medical attention at that time. Not everyone will end up in a hospital, but if you um, are waiting to end up in a hospital, honestly, I think uh, that's a dangerous approach to mental health. So, and it's also not comforting to, to talk about because there's so much stigma. Even just right now when people are viewing, they're like, oh, so she is mad or crazy or, yeah, that's what people just, people just assume, uh, uh, oh, there's already a stigma that's built up in society that if you are a mental health patient, you are a crazy person or you are going mad or you're losing your mind. And this can affect your, your how people look at you, your social uh, standing, where you stand in the society. Sometimes employers, even people in the school systems can just disadvantage you if you are now too open about these things. So <laughs> I'm taking a leap of faith that people will still look at me as me. I'm still a human being at the end of the day. And without uh, going in, in in the details of my story, I will be um, joined by a medical doctor who will tell us really the basics that everyone needs to know about mental health. The doctor is finally here, guys. Uh, doctor, please tell us about yourself, just a little bit. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Dr. Philemon Shatiroko. Um, I am a junior doctor at Katatura State Hospital. And basically, I uh, major in um, primary health care, uh, of which mental health uh, that we're talking about today is part of the, um, the primary health care. Wow, guys. So, you're going to hear it from the professionals, man. So, you can even take your note books out so i prepared only five short questions for the doctor about mental health the first one is what is mental health including causes symptoms and stereotypes okay so uh, mental health is quite broad uh, to begin with um, and especially as uh, in that uh, elaborate introduction that you gave us uh, but uh, particularly mental health is illnesses of um, that uh, um, um, uh, uh, pertaining to uh, your personality and uh, your behavior and your emotions. Okay, so uh, when we take it back to now what causes mental uh, health uh, illnesses is that um, mental health illnesses are actually um, in medicine we call it iatrogenic. So this basically means that um, the theories, we, form, uh, we formulate theories uh, to try and explain you know, why people get mental Ill health illnesses. Um, of one, um, the most um, sort of uh, agreed upon theory in medicine is that um, so 
in the brain, the way the brain functions, the connections between the neurons and the nerves in your brain, uh, they send signals towards each other with uh, you know specific chemicals, right? So that you can do this, so you can do that, and this also controls your sleep, it controls your emotions. So uh, in some instances, then you get um, an imbalance in the chemicals in the brain, and then you end up having a mental health illness. Okay. So um, the stereotypes that come with that is that um, uh, more often than not, people find it a bit hard to understand, especially people outside of the medical fraternity, which makes sense uh, because it's quite a complex issue. And I believe this is why um, uh, our colleague here, Alina, is uh, bringing forth such a discussion so we can delve deeper into it. Um, and yeah, so it goes much deeper than that, but that's just the, uh, you know, the basic uh, explanation that I can provide about what causes and what mental illness is and what causes uh, mental health is. Um, thank you so much for that, Doctor. I just wanted to get, are the chemicals you are referring to also what they call hormones? Um, so they are uh, neurotransmitters, um, which is essentially you can call them a type of hormone. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, I think that also covers our next topic because it says truth about mental health. I just wanted the audience to hear from someone in the field of medicine that maybe uh, mental health or mental illness is just an illness like any other. Like, what is your stance on that? Because that's my understanding that I think what is more popular is um, you breaking a bone or you bleeding, uh, you know. But then if you say you have a mental illness, people are like, where does it hurt? Mm -hmm. So um, the thing about mental health illnesses is that um, it is just like an Ill is an illness just like any other. Um, it is caused by defects in your biology and your anatomy just like any other illness. So and uh, the reason why um, the re another reason why we believe why why you should understand that this is just like an illness like any other. Uh, mental health illnesses have a familial predilection. So if you, um, for instance, come to the hospital, we ask you a set of questions. Uh, is there anybody in your family with high blood pressure? Is there anybody in your family uh, with diabetes? In the same line, we can also ask you, is there somebody in your family with mental health illnesses? Because these are also uh, sort of familial. And this essentially gives us the clue that it's just like, it's an illness just like any other and requires medical attention just like any other. Oh, thank you so much for that. I hope you guys um, you now understand that um, even if there's a stigma, uh, please understand that this is a norm. Maybe it's a new thing to us in our communities, but just, I mean, I don't want to take doctors' words away. It is normal, guys. If you have a diagnosis, there's no need to be ashamed. You know, society might take a while to accept you, but that's okay. We will get there. So earlier I mentioned that I have my own story as mental health. So now uh, speaking as a, a patient, you know, dealing with mental health as a patient. Um, sometimes it can be, for me, it was a first time diagnosis. It was rather hard, uh, you know, just to accept, especially in a society where you are sitting that there's actually not really a good room for you. So is there a guide maybe to other people? Because I know I'm not the only one. Is there a guide that you can tell um, just the viewers, uh, doctor, um, how to deal with first time diagnosis or just the diagnosis in general, accepting that you need to be on treatment because it can be quite hard because this is a new lifestyle you have to adopt. You now have to take medication, you know, just, 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 just that and maybe a sort of encouragement. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first step uh, when it comes to dealing with mental illnesses is acceptance. Um, oftentimes we get people who are, have clinical symptoms of a mental health illness and they do not accept that they have a mental illness and that sort of, uh, sort of sets you back because you do not get the, uh, um, the help that you require since uh, it is mental you have to also adjust your thoughts to living with uh, and understanding the mental health illness. That is the first step. Um, the second step uh, stems in our societal structure and I'm also uh, leaning towards the, uh, so, uh, the cultural aspects of it. Right? Because excuse me, culturally, um, mental health uh, illnesses were sort of seen as a taboo and people were kind of ostracized, like you said earlier. Um, 
However, that is another way, another aspect that we need to sort of address in that uh, because because these the, 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 this kind of uh, kind of sets uh, people with mental health illness uh, to the side. And once we need we need to start bridging that gap and accepting them as people with just another illness that requires um, 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 uh, treatment. Uh, and thirdly, uh, would be that uh, once you have uh, uh, been diagnosed with a mental illness, it's important to uh, sort of have uh, 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 patience because uh, the process of working through uh, what is the changes in your lifestyle and what is going on in your, in, in your brain and your emotions is a very slow, but um, it is very uh, fruitful once you have the patience for um, what it is that the help that you're receiving yeah perhaps we could work on a guide like detailed to like how you can do this but um uh, the next question is um i realized that i also watched uh, my family and friends and myself all that once you are now diagnosed or you now have that illness whether you have gone to the hospital or you haven't your behavior while you are sick or with that diagnosis affects your immediate surrounding and these people um, I don't I, I, that's why this video is for everyone mm -hmm. so if you don't have a diagnosis you probably know someone with a diagnosis or you are so maybe you are like you're, you're becoming suspicious because they are uh, behaving strangely so how does our immediate surrounding let's say family friends associate co-workers employers schoolmates mm -hmm. um, now work around being with us in, in 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 such a manner that it's uh, it's it's not um, so tense for anyone you know mm -hmm. like because that's now the affected community like i i don't know how to call it but doctor mm -hmm. can 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 go in the details okay. of that so bit. from from my understanding is that uh we need to uh we need to have an approach where we are educating people more on mental health illnesses that's the first part because uh people tend to fear what they don't understand right and they tend to treat it as foreign when they do not understand it uh, and this is why we need to upload um, platforms like this that are you know reaching out to the people and giving information that is very very important uh, because and we need to start having our, these discussions in our community uh, at home in casual conversations we need to start talking about these things because these things are more common than we think uh, you can uh, there's a there's a saying that goes around the uh, the, the happiest people are the saddest and this is why you find people committing suicide and you have no idea why this person committed suicide it's because uh from 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 what we see what the, it's like a smoke curtain from what we see uh so that's leading it leading me to my next point in that we need to sort of start talking to each other you need to check in on your friends you need to check in on your family and just find out where they are at uh doing it mentally uh that is another approach that we can use to sort of uh bridge this gap and let allow people to acclimatize because once you know of mental health illnesses and somebody close to you is uh, diagnosed with it then you're able to help them um with the treatment of uh, uh, mental health illness uh, from a medical standpoint so we do what is called biopsychosocial uh we do so that's three uh, tiers of treatment so biologically uh, psychologically where you see a, a therapist and you have therapy session and socially where we address the social aspects so biologically um, not everybody with a mental illness will be on medication and not everybody on medication will be on uh, not, not everybody with a mental illness that started on medication will remain on medication so the, the treatment is very dynamic and it requires a very close close relationship between your doctor your psychiatrist, uh, your, psych your, your, your psychologist, as well as a social worker. So the social workers um, uh, then uh, peruse into the community and they do uh, family counseling, uh, they can do partner counseling if you're married, they can even have a session with the children. And these sessions are not the once off and they are ongoing. Um, and furthermore, social workers also reach, can also reach out to um, your employer and they sort of veneer the um, uh, the transition from full-time employment maybe to part-time or working from home so these are all sorts of approaches that are incorporated that will help uh, uh, that that we that that is that we can sort of like look at that um, uh, help our friends and family and those around us to cope with this mental health illness because it affects us all 
Wow. Um, I think that also just uh, reminds me of the support that I had. I think it played a role in me getting better because my partner was there, my parents were there, my siblings were there, even my employer was involved. So not everyone maybe has a job, but everybody that is immediately involved in your life, like Dr. Said, needs to do their part, so to say, to help you with your journey. The more supporting they are, the easier it becomes on the patient. That's important what you just said, uh, because sometimes a mental health illness will uh, render you unemployable. Um, and we do sessions called uh, occupational therapy that sort of uh, teach you skills as a mentally uh, um, a mentally uh, mentally uh, uh, unwell person uh, to sort of uh, learn skills that will help you that will make you more employable. So um, it's, it's a very very important point that you brought up. Oh, thank you so much. And this is the last question, guys. Um, I just just. Um, Maybe if you maybe if uh, you have someone or you are someone that's affected, where do you get help? Where do you get professional help? Uh, any additional information where you need? Because I think doctor knows just the right place. Yes. Um, so, uh, like I said earlier, um, the approach to mental health illness is um, multidisciplinary. So you are not treated by just one person. You will need to see a psychologist, which is a doctor. That, may, uh, that specializes in mental health illnesses uh, and then you can see a psychiatrist, a psychologist who is a uh, basically a, um, a therapist okay and then you can see a social worker, you can see a uh, occupational therapist so it's a multidisciplinary um, um, sort of um, uh, approach. You can also see general practitioner, there's also uh, uh, illnesses that require um, like a neurologist, Etc. Etc. So it's a multidisciplinary. So um, for the purpose of uh, our setting here in Namibia, we have more of more of the help that is um, afforded uh, to the general public is in the uh, public sector. So this is in Katutura uh, Central Hospital Complex. So in between those two hospitals, we have our mental health unit, um, which uh, has uh, all these auxiliary sort of facilities. We have inpatient and outpatient uh, facilities. So this is a unit that uh, one can go to. You can go for uh, therapy sessions. You can go for medical treatment. You can go for uh, admission if you're, feel, if you're feeling unwell. So uh, that is one of the units that you can go to. Um, and I believe there's also an institute in the north, um, or Shakachi State Hospital. Yes. Um, they call it Ward 16, I, um, uh, which has a negative connotation to it, and which is something we also need to address. But it is also a mental health unit, like uh, the one here in Ventuk. So um, yes, that is also another place where somebody can go uh, to um, um, uh, seek uh, uh, um, help. Um, furthermore, there is also uh, private uh, facilities for people who uh, have access to um, um, health insurance or medical aid um, and we'll put links to those uh, in the description below, we'll put a link uh, to a couple of um, those and then if you're interested you can um, have a look at it. Wow, uh, thank you so much doctor. Um, I must just extend extra gratitude to doctor because he really availed himself <laughs> for someone that's going on shift tonight to be here. It's really big. Thank you so much for making the time and I hope people learned. Thank you so much. I'm not going to dilute the points. Just thank you guys for watching. I think we'll need to do more series on um, mental health. I just needed to have a health professional here because people have a tendency of ignoring you because they're like, what do you know about mental health? It didn't come from me. It came from a medical expert. Thank you so much for your time. And All right. Um, so in closing, I'd um, just like to thank Alina for having me uh, on her channel. Um, I too also have a, channel, a YouTube channel where I talk about um, uh, medical illnesses and just answer questions that you guys might have with a, a few couple of colleagues of mine from, um, from the, it's called at the third space underscore, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, uh, as a final saying, I would just like to uh, sort of uh, say how proud I am to see, uh, you know, people struggling with mental health illnesses taking initiative. Uh, to educate the masses uh, and people with mental health illnesses are very strong and I really really I'm really really proud of Alina for taking that leap of faith and uh, providing us with such a platform. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>